we estimate that there are about 1.8 million species of organisms of all kinds known on this planet. Known, that is, having been discovered by scientists, diagnosed, that is, given the characteristics that define these, each of these species, and then a scientific name. How many species are actually on Earth? We don't know if it's closer to 10 million or to 100 million. One way to view evolution is as a tremendous process of diversification. One species gives rise to other species and so on until you have literally millions of species on Earth at any one time. All of these species are related to one another by an ancestor-descendant relationship. And the, the analogy that's used is the great tree of life. But the details of all of the different branches and the leaves on the ends of the tree have been poorly known. Here at Harvard, we have several groups of investigators who are involved in projects entitled ATOL, or Assembling the Tree of Life. And each of these projects has taken on its task of defining the relationships of a particular segment in the Tree of Life. And ultimately, our contributions will be combined with those at other universities, museums, botanical gardens, and so forth to produce the complete understanding of diversity of life on Earth. The part of the tree of life that we're studying in my lab focuses on animals, the relationships among the different animal phyla. One of our most recent projects deals with the relationships among the different mollusk classes. It's the second largest group of animals in terms of species include many familiar organisms like snails and slugs, octopuses, squid, clams. But the relationships among those very familiar groups is actually very poorly understood by scientists. We're gonna be working on studying the genomics of many different groups of mollusks and trying to come up with a solid relationship of all these groups. As a botanist, I'm interested in the phylogeny of plants. Flowering plants really represents the major radiation um, in the plant tree of life. But there are other groups of seed plants, and they haven't been very well sampled, and so we actually don't understand the evolutionary history of seed plants, even though seeds are such an important innovation. One of the major challenges is connecting our understanding of the fossil record with our understanding of what we learned from studying DNA sequences of the living organisms and finding a way to integrate those two very disparate types of data. So if you can imagine that it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle, say you have a thousand pieces of the jigsaw puzzle and you have a few pieces from one area and a few pieces from another area, uh, but then if we don't have all the pieces it becomes very difficult to understand how those clusters fit together and we can't assemble the whole puzzle and it's the fossils that are those missing pieces. The expertise of our lab lies in one great group of animals, the beetles, the Coleoptera. Beetles are uh, extraordinarily diverse, sort of f famously so. They are about one out of every four animals, believe it or not. At least 350,000 described species, probably just a fraction of what's actually out there. Any of us who have eaten any products of wheat, rice, or corn today in your breakfast cereal, maybe toast, maybe a sandwich for lunch, have probably eaten a part of a beetle. Because beetles take about one third of the world's grain crop every year, about 35 to 50 billion dollars worth of grain. We can't escape them. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has thresholds of beetle parts per million in every load of processed grain ready to be turned into foodstuffs for us. They're just everywhere and we can't get away from them. We gather two kinds of data, some which are directly genetic, that is they're the DNA sequences of particular genes that are encoded within the genome of the species of beetles we work on. We also work on the products of those genes, that is the morphological characters, the anatomical characters that the genes code for. And that way we can um, have a very precise estimate of relationships among beetles based on particular genes. Assembling the tree of life is a vast undertaking. 
It's going to take many, many years for us to work out all of the different branches and particular relationships among all the at least 1.8 million named species of life on Earth. While this is a very important exercise for evolutionary biology per se, interestingly, the, uh, the information that is being yielded by ATOL, assembling the tree of life, has very important benefits in areas that we might not immediately expect. It has benefits in agriculture, in medicine, in behavior. So the information that comes from our understanding of the tree of life has direct and valuable benefits for human society in all kinds of interesting areas.